Okay, good afternoon, uh, dear teachers and uh, students. Uh, for every uh, teacher, handling afternoon session is a big challenge. So, uh, I, I think I may try my level best to engage you uh, with the help of some visuals and videos in computational chemistry. So, after the world is going through a very uh, tough situation of COVID-19 pandemic, you know, the whole world is facing uh, many pathetic situations and our academic business and uh, educational purposes and educational programs completely changed to online mode during the lockdown period. I think computational chemistry is one of the suitable topic uh, to fit for this uh, online education system. So what is computational chemistry? It is chemistry using computer or computer softwares. So what are our tools? Our tools are computer softwares. We know several computer softwares. This Adobe Reader uh, is a computer software to read PDF file. VLC Media Player is a software to play the media files. Similarly, we have computational chemistry softwares to run the chemical calculations. What we are calculating? We are calculating molecular or atomic properties. And what is our result? As a result, we can explain the chemical properties of different molecules, atoms or molecular systems. And we have two major classes of computational chemistry. One is computational quantum chemistry and the other is computational classical mechanics. So, computational quantum chemistry or quantum chemistry uh, from the uh, this intermediate classes you are all familiar with the de Broglie's concept of wave nature of electrons so quantum chemistry deals with the micro particles or electrons or protons or in short we can say quantum chemistry deals with the particles of sufficient wave nature or sufficient de Broglie wave nature. And we have a big list of scientists that developed this computational quantum chemistry field. In 1998, Walter Kohn and John Popel received uh, their contributions in computational quantum chemistry. Right. So I just explain a simple theory of uh, this quantum chemistry calculation. We are solving Schrodinger equation. We are all familiar with the Schrodinger equation. What is Schrodinger equation? Si is equal to E psi where HK up is an operator, a mathematical operator. Thing. What is this mathematical operator means? Uh, a, a Hamiltonian operator is an operator a math that is in a mathematical form. And that operator is a total energy operator or potential energy operator plus kinetic energy operator will give a total energy operator called Hamiltonian operator. And the side time is the wave function term. When this operator acts on this wave function, we are getting energy value as the result. Suppose we want to solve the Schrodinger equation for hydrogen atom. In hydrogen atom, how many electrons are there? Only one electron. So we have an approximate wave function for that electron. Psi of electron present in hydrogen atom is E raised to minus alpha R squared. And if we operate this total energy operator, h cross square by 2m del square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 into 1 by r, act on e raised to minus alpha r square, we are getting an energy value of minus 13.6 electron volt. You are familiar with the number, minus 13.6 electron volt is the energy of electron in the first Bohr orbit of hydrogen atom. So using a computational chemistry, quantum chemistry software, you can calculate the energy of electron in Bohr orbit, first Bohr orbit of hydrogen atom. Years back, Bohr conducted this experiment and from the spectroscopical experiment, he calculated this value and using a simple click, we can calculate this value. So hyd hydrogen is a one electron system. But when the electrons are more and when the number of electrons are more in atoms or molecules other than hydrogen. So 
the things are become more complex. That means the Schrodinger equation become more and more complex. So a lot of approximations are involved in solving the Schrodinger equation. So in course of time, various methods, various methods with the accuracy, with the merits and limitations are coming to the picture. Variation method, federation method, Hartree-Fox self-consistent method, Ebenezer method, DFT methods, and lot of quantum chemistry methods uh, are uh, developed by you know, various scientists across the globe. And these are some computational quantum chemistry methods. This HF method, DFT method, or Ebenezer method is a common name of that uh, method. Uh, MP2 molar plus method. So the Hamiltonian operator part of the Schrodinger equation can be treated using any one of this computational quantum chemistry method. And now we have to solve the next part. What is our next part? The wave function part. In computational quantum chemistry, the wave function part of the Schrodinger equation is treated as basis set. Basis set. What do you mean by basis set? A basis set is a mathematical function. And what is that mathematical function represent? This mathematical function is, of, is a molecular orbital function. How you obtain this molecular orbital function? Linear combination of atomic orbital functions. So how this, how you obtain this atomic orbital functions? Actually, all the basis sets are prepared from hydrogen atomic orbital functions, hydrogen type functions. Just uh, we have a visualization of this hydrogen atomic orbital functions. I think uh, the, the picture is visible to you, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, it's quite visible. So I just show a visual of evolution of hydrogen orbital or hydrogen type basis functions or SPDF functions. S orbital, P orbital, D orbital, F orbital are familiar to us. So actually these basis functions uh, which combine to form a basis set originated from this hydrogen type orbital functions. So, so in solving the Schrodinger equation, in solving the Schrodinger equation, our Hamiltonian operator part can be treated using a quantum chemistry method, HF method or DFT method. Our wave function part can be treated using a basis set. We have smaller and bigger basis sets. Smaller, uh, we, we can use smaller or bigger basis set for a, for a molecule or for an atom in a computational chemistry calculation. And, and the smaller or bigger basis set depend upon the number of basis functions present in it. I'm not going into the detailed part of uh, this basis set. Anyway, so the Hamiltonian operator part of the Schrodinger equation derived from any one of the quantum chemistry method or Ebenezer method, semi-empirical method or DFT method. Uh, and I'm not going into the details of these methods. Anyway, this density functional theory, density functional theory is a quantum chemistry method based on electron density functions, while the Ebenezer methods are based on electron wave function. Here, density functional theory 
is based on electron density functional and B3 LYP is a popular popular density functional popular density functional. Now the requirement of one the first requirement for a computational chemistry calculation quantum chemistry calculation instead of HI in computational chemistry terms we are using HF321 G or MP2321 G or DFT B3 leaf 321 G. Here HF or MP2 is your Hamiltonian part and 321 G is your basis set. So first part is over or the selection of the method and basis set is the first part in a computational quantum chemistry calculation. Now we have to run the calculation on a molecule. We are going to perform a computational chemistry calculation on a molecule. How the molecule is identified by a computational chemistry software? The structure of the molecule can be presented as uh, presented as in Cartesian coordinate format or internal coordinate formats. So Cartesian coordinate three dimension in three dimensional space, every points or every atoms in a three dimensional space uh, is is represented using X, Y, Z coordinates. For hydrogen bromide molecule, the Cartesian coordinate format for bromine atom X, Y, Z coordinates and for hydrogen atom X, Y, Z coordinates are already already given in this uh, slide. Uh, for H2O molecule, we have three atoms and uh, corresponding to oxygen atom, two hydrogen atoms, we have X, Y, Z coordinates. For hydrogen peroxide molecule, again, you are having four atoms and corresponding to each atom, you are having uh, three dimensional Cartesian coordinate. Other uh, coordinate representations like Z metrics are also possible. Now, in a in a in a uh, computational chemistry software, you can sketch the three dimensional structure of the molecule. Even using ChemSketch or ChemDraw, you can sketch the molecule. Then you can save the Cartesian coordinates uh, of that molecule. So you just visualize just to visualize the 3D structure of uh, some molecules. You can visualize the 3D structure of uh, some molecules. So uh, using this is a visualization by OVIA Discovery Studio Visualizer Client. This is a visualization software, computational chemistry software. And using this software, you can visualize the water molecule. So this is the three dimensional uh, structure of water molecule. So corresponding to oxygen atom and hydrogen atom in three dimensional space, you are having X, Y, Z coordinates. And in this structure, water has a bond angle of 109.5 degree and OH bond length is 0.990 uh, angstrom units, right? So this is just a 3D visualization, 3D visualization of a, of a molecular structure. When, when you visualize the hydrogen peroxide molecule similarly, uh, it contained four atoms. It contained four atoms, and uh, uh, the molecule. What are the peculiarity of this? Uh, what is the peculiarity of this molecule? It has a torsion angle or a dihedral angle. Other than the bond angle, it has a torsion angle. It has a torsion angle. Other than the bond angle, torsion angle means it is the angle between two planes. Two planes. So I'm not going into the detail of uh, this torsion angle uh, right now. Uh, anyway, so uh, this molecule has bonds. This molecule has bond angles. This molecule has uh, torsion angles, etc. Uh, so this is a three-dimensional visualization of hydrogen peroxide molecule. Hydrogen peroxide uh, molecule. Right. Now, now we have we have a method to calculate. We have a basis set to specify the molecule. Uh, we have the Cartesian coordinate representation or Cartesian coordinate format to represent the structure of 3D structure of the molecule. Now the third requirement, which type of calculation you are going to perform using a uh, computational quantum chemistry software. You can calculate the single point energy of a given structure or a given geometry of the molecule. Uh, we call it a single point energy. That means energy of a point geometry. And another type of calculation is geometry optimization. That means optimizing a given geometry to a stable geometry with the minimum energy. That is optimizing the given geometry to a better geometry. 
So in between this geometry optimization, different single point energy sequence of single point energy calculations are going on. And third type of calculation is uh, your vibrational frequency of bonds uh, present in the atoms of uh, atoms in a molecule. So three types of calculation or job type in computational chemistry, we are uh, uh, telling us job type. Our job type is single point energy, geometry optimization or frequency analysis. So, so we are almost done. So uh, sketch a molecule uh, like water molecule or high, uh, this hydrogen atom or methane molecule using a software, save its coordinates, save its coordinates, then uh, specify uh, which, which is the job type or what you want to calculate in that molecule, energy of the molecule or uh, optimize the given geometry of the molecule or find the frequency of vibration of bonds uh, in the molecule. So specify the type of calculation and specify the method. That means whether HF method or DFT method is used in the uh, calculation. Specify a basis set for the calculation. So insert these three information, the requirement one, requirement two and requirement three to a text file or an input file. And this input file is subjected to a quantum chemistry software like Gaussian or Gamma's. Run the calculation, we are getting the result. So this is the simple, simple picture of a computational uh, quantum chemistry calculation, right? So in a, in almost all input files, uh, uh, the minimum information uh, related to your calculation type your method of calculation, your basis set, your charge of the molecule, uh, spin multiplicity of the molecule and uh, your structural data. OK, so I may just show you just a simple calculation of hydrogen atom. Calcul we are going to calculate the energy of hydrogen atom using a computational quantum chemistry software. So I may start uh, this Gaussian is a commercial software. I may in a molecule window. I'm going to sketch this hydrogen atom. I just sketch the hydrogen atom. Sketch the hydrogen atom. I take my calculation setup. I wish to calculate the energy and my method is Hartree Fock. My basis set is 3 to 1 G and I just submit this calculation save it in a particular folder okay hydrogen save it okay something wrong happened submit save Yes, the calculation is running. The calculation is running and you are getting a final result. What is our final result? Yeah. File opened. And summary of this result. Your energy value is, your energy value is minus 0 0.496 Hartree, minus 0 0.496 Hartree. And this is almost equal to minus 13.6 electron volt, minus 0 0.496 Hartree, and this equal to minus 13.5 electron. It is nearer to the experimental value. That means this calculation, we are just calculating the energy of electron, a single point energy calculation of hydrogen atom single point energy calculation of hydrogen atom. Next, we are going to do a geometry optimization. In this, in this picture, you just see you are having three geometries. Point geometry one, point geometry two and point geometry three. So in the geometry optimization process, we start from point geometry one. Optimizing session procedure means we change the geometry, we find the 
single point energy. Again, we change the geometry. We find the single point energy. At a particular stage, the calculation stops and we are obtaining a stable point geometry. So here, stable point geometry is point geometry 3. How this become a stable point geometry? Because the actual bond length of water molecule or actual bond angle of water molecule is obtained in the point geometry 3. So ultimately, as a result of this geometry optimization, you are you are getting you are getting an optimum geometry or a stable geometry with the minimum energy. So I may I may show a simple a simple uh, calculation. Geometry optimization of given geometry of water molecule here. File new. In a molecule window, I am going to sketch water molecule. I am going to sketch the water molecule. I think uh, this is visible to you, right, sir? Yeah, yes, sir, it's visible. So calculate Gaussian calculation step optimization. I I specify my job type as optimization. My method is Hartree-Fock and three uh, Hartree-Fock method. My basis set is 321G. Again, I submit my calculation. Save that input file. What water opt? Water opt. Save it. Run it. And we are obtaining a stable geometry after this, after this calculation. Right. So this is the graph of this optimization. That means geometry one has bigger energy. Geometry two has lower energy than geometry one and geometry three has the, uh, lower energy or minimum energy. That that is the most stable geometry in this optimization in this geometry optimization. So we are following we are following an optimization procedure of of or a geometry optimization procedure, a structural optimization procedure. Or we are getting the energy path of this optimization procedure during this uh, uh, quantum chemistry optimization calculation. Right. I may back to my presentation now. So, so this is the plot of geometry optimization and what about the different basis set? When you are using different basis set for the same molecule and for the same calculation, what should be the result? So uh, for, in, for your information, if we are using higher basis set, more computational time or more time is required to complete the or finish the calculation. But your result is more accurate. And now the third type or job type is frequency, fundamental vibrational frequency. Again, I may do one calculation. You can calculate the fundamental stretching frequencies, fundamental vibrational frequencies of water molecule using this computational quantum chemistry calculation. File. Calculate. Here, Job type is frequency. Frequency. Again, your method and basis set is same. You just save water frequency. Water frequency. Save. Yes. Job is completed. So. You are getting the fundamental water has three fundamental vibrational frequencies stretching and bending mode. You have symmetric stretching. You have symmetric stretching. Symmetric stretching. You have asymmetric stretching. Sorry, this one is bending. You have bending. You have bending vibration. You have uh, this symmetric stretching and you have this asymmetric stretching and you can visualize the IR spectrum of water molecule. 
you can visualize the ir spectrum of water molecule right so this is a simple computational quantum chemistry calculation so three job type your single point energy calculation uh, your geometry optimization and your frequency analysis or frequency calculation i already already done in this uh, in this presentation now we are uh, we are moving to some more uh, uh, serious calculations that means this geometry optimization with the frequency analysis gives a potential energy profile of a chemical process actually this is an optimization procedure in this uh, in this particular slide you are having three geometries actually this is a chemical reaction what is that chemical reaction the reaction of conversion of hnc hydrogen isocyanide to hcl so this is a chemical reaction hydrogen isocyanide to hydrogen cyanide hnc to hcn conversion this is an isomerization reaction using this computational chemistry calculation we are deriving the energy path of this reaction just i show three geometries also in between this chemical reaction first geometry is hnc geometry or your reactant state geometry right the in between a higher energy geometry is your transition state geometry and finally you are having a product state hcn geometry and a stable geometry so actually we are now using we are now doing uh, or we are now following the path of a chemical reaction using a computational chemistry calculation right so these type of uh, uh, studies that means can be expanded uh, to reaction mechanism studies so actually chemist organic chemist uh, join hands with the computational chemist to uh, to derive the uh, mechanistic steps actually you are uh, you are studying these organic reactions like fitter craft reaction uh, or reimer timmen reaction and uh, you already uh, studied in your bsc classes the mechanism of this reaction and actually experimental from the experimental procedure or from the kinetic experiments we can derive the mechanism of this reaction but nowadays people are using or people are trusting this computational chemistry quantum chemistry methods to uh, derive the mechanism of the reaction or path of the reaction right so so the so the energy path in kinetics you are plotting the same uh, you are plotting the same diagram that means Uh, the energy of the reactants in between in between uh, the that means starting geometry is reactant state geometry you are having a minimum energy for the reactants again it changes to a transition state geometry with a higher energy and finally it reaches the product state geometry with the with the uh, with a stable uh, with a stable state the stable state right so this is the modeling of a nucleophilic substitution reaction using a computational chemistry calculation so you are you are deriving the potential energy path of this reaction actually this is sn2 reaction a backside attack backside attack then an intermediate formation and finally walden inversion give rise to product give rise to product c3 group is in in the center of this uh, uh, this visual and uh, a nucleophile is attacking from the back side a green colored nucleophile and uh, it is substituted it is substituted with a brown colored nucleophile right so you can derive the reaction the, the uh, energy path of this reaction using a, a computational chemistry calculation and uh, you can visualize this uh, visualize this uh, the path or irc reaction coordinate reaction coordinate of this Uh, of this hcn hnc reaction right so you look in this process in this process from hnc this hydrogen atom is and that means from uh, in between the this hydrogen atom is located in between the nc bond and from the nitrogen it is shifted to the carbon atom so we can derive the path of this isomerization reaction using a computational chemistry calculation right so so again we can we can perform this keto in or automorphism like simple calculations uh, simple calculations using our msc chemistry students are doing this type of uh, simple experiments like uh, 
and this deriving the potential energy path of this keto enol tautomerism like uh, calculations are doing by our msc students uh, for the uh, computational chemistry practicals right now the expanded form of this computational chemistry research uh, uh, we we join hands with the, we we are purely computational chemistry people in this picture uh, my senior colleague uh, dr m jor sir and me uh, collaborated with uh, two experimental chemists of mg university kottayam chemical sciences uh, and they do the experiment they synthesize uh, a compound using uh, metal catalyzed cross coupling reactions and we study the mechanism of reaction and publish this article in 2019 in uh, polyhedra and lc your article again this is another uh, article published uh, by us uh, when we uh, collaborate with uh, the experimental people so experimental so uh, in this calculations in this calculations what we derive the mechanism or path of the reaction path of the reaction so this is one of the scope of the computational chemistry so actually i started with the single point energy calculation then geometry optimization frequency analysis in this sequence you can understand in the in the same sequence um, you can understand how we can derive the path of a chemical reaction using a computational chemistry calculation right and this is uh, this is uh, some uh, results from that journal wiley journal now other calculations like molecular orbital calculations are also possible in the molecular orbital for example a simple molecule h2 molecule you know the two electrons are are filled in uh, 1s2 sigma 1s2 mo molecular level molecular orbital then the next orbital is sigma star 1s what is your homo homo means highest occupied molecular orbital the two electrons are filled to this sigma 1s and that is your highest occupied molecular orbital and sigma star 1s is your vacant or just higher upper orbital with a un uh, or unoccupied molecular orbital so the expansion is lowest unoccupied molecular orbital we can visualize this molecular orbital using uh, a computational uh, chemistry calculation so this alpha mmos molecular orbitals so you can visualize this uh, this homo that means sigma 1s and sigma star 1s you can visualize yeah this is your sigma 1s orbital this is your sigma 1s orbital this is your sigma 1s orbital okay i may select now the sigma star 1s or anti bonding molecular orbital you can visualize this one yeah this is your anti bonding molecular orbital okay so you can visualize this molecular orbital or you can do the molecular orbital calculations using computational quantum chemistry so lot of other experiments even you can do uh, this experiments uh, using your laptop with uh, without the help of this commercial softwares like uh, gaussian you can do lot of calculations uh, our msc students are doing these type of cal calculate the resonance energy of benzene calculate the ring strain energy of cyclopropane calculate the ir spectrum of water molecule calculate the gibbs free energy of some gaseous phase reactions perform the conformation analysis of butane lot and lot of calculations we are Uh, we are performing using this computational quantum chemistry uh, uh, methods okay so uh, even using free softwares avogadro firefly and fascio i think your msc students are familiar uh, with this uh, firefly fascio software firefly avogadro software anyway you can you can perform this type of simple calculations uh, using this computational quantum chemistry methods right now i am moving to another area of uh, computational chemistry computational chemistry based on classical mechanics or statistical mechanics and in the previous discussion our particles are electrons 
or we are dealing with a we are dealing with the quantum or micro particles in this computational classical mechanics or molecular mechanics the particles are atoms and our systems are bigger molecules or macro molecules like protein systems or polymer systems so the treatment lead to molecular mechanics or molecular dynamics method in uh, computational physics and this method is based on the newtonian mechanics or newton's laws of motion you are all familiar with the, the second law of motion f is equal to ma force into force is equal to mass into acceleration or mass into second order derivative of position of a particle or we can we can equate this force field in which a molecule is existing uh, to the potential energy to the potential energy so you can calculate the potential energy of a macro molecular system not quantum mechanically not quantum mechanically no electronic structure calculation is involved in this process this is purely molecular mechanics calculation molecular mechanics calculation and uh, this using this force field expression or potential energy expression you can calculate you can calculate the potential energy of the whole molecular system how you calculate the potential energy of whole molecular system the sum of potential energies of all bond structures the sum of all angle bends the sum of energies of all torsion angles the sum of energies of all non bonding interactions and by taking the sum of all energies you can calculate the total energy of a macro molecular system or for a simple demonstration uh, i am choosing three molecular systems in the first the first system is hydrogen chloride molecule hydrogen chloride molecule or hydrogen chloride sample uh, gas taken in a vessel two types of interactions uh, i i just introduced two types of uh, interactions here one is bond stretching interaction bond stretching means there is a bond between hydrogen and a chlorine atom so bond stretching interactions and energy associated with the bond stretching is involved here and other non bonding interactions because between two hcl molecules there is non bonding interactions or van der waal interactions so we have to calculate the energy associated with all these van der waal interactions or non bonding interactions and and some of these two interactions uh we take the total energy of the system as a sum of these two interactions just for a simple uh, or a simple explanation i am just choosing this uh, simple system and uh, the second system is water system in water system in water system one more other than this bonding interactions and uh, non bonding interaction one more interaction one more interaction angle bending interactions are possible so you can calculate the energy of this molecular system by uh, by adding the energies of and uh, energies associated with the all bond stretches all angle bends all non bonding interactions etc and when you move to this hydrogen peroxide system again the terms the energy terms are increasing so for a macro molecular system for a macro molecular system you are you are having potential energy force field force field expressions charm force field amber force field these are some expressions expressions potential energy expressions okay so i'm not going into the detail of this uh, this uh, your girish sir is an expert in this area anyway in in this in this uh, molecular dynamics or molecular mechanics in this molecular mechanics uh, we are having a type of calculation called molecular dynamic simulations you can simulate the real systems so what do you mean by simulation simulation means the real systems brought into computer using some computer programs some computer program so you can you can follow the motion of molecules in a molecular system you can follow or trace the motion or dynamics of uh, atoms or uh, molecules in a molecular system so molecular dynamics simulations are actually the application that means in the calculation level we can call we can we can uh, 
call it as molecular dynamic simulations. Is the application of these molecular mechanics method, and again uh, the these uh, molecular dynamics simulation softwares identify this structure of the molecule in PDB format. What do you mean by PDB format? Just like your Cartesian coordinate format. This is again a Cartesian coordinate format, but uh, in order to handle bigger systems like proteins, protein amino acid residue, we are using this PDB format. The expansion of PDB is protein data bank, protein data bank, right? So the structure of the molecule or geometry of the molecules used in the molecular mechanics or molecular dynamics calculation is in the PDB format. And this is a part of the PDB file of a, a bigger protein structure, part of a PDB structure of, of uh, PDB file, part of a PDB file. Here again, Cartesian coordinates associated with the atoms are expressed, uh, are expressed in this PDB file. So you can visualize the PDB structure, PDB structure of uh, a small protein, a beta protein. You can visualize, you can visualize the PDB structure of, yeah. So this is a simple protein. In previous case, in both view, you just visualize simple water molecule uh, with the three atoms or a simple hydrogen atom. Here, this is even a small protein. Uh, I think uh, uh, this contain nearly 1,500 atoms. So this 1,500 atom coordinates are, uh, are, are present in this PDB file. So I visualize using a visualization software, this uh, PDB file this PDB file. So in macromolecular calculations, in macromolecular calculations, we are, we are, we are simulating the macromolecular systems or uh, uh, this uh, protein systems or polymer systems. But uh, this is not, uh, we, uh, this molecular dynamics or molecular mechanics is a full course, a full uh, semester course. And uh, I just uh, present you the uh, basic algorithm, basic algorithm to do a molecular dynamics simulation. And you can watch uh, some visuals. Uh, simulation of cholesterol in water. Uh, this project is done by one of my MSc, MSc students. And actually, she is not the first person to simulate cholesterol. Uh, big scientists uh, did this simulation previously, and she reproduced the result. The cholesterol molecule is immersed in a water box and just simulate this cholesterol molecule. This cholesterol molecule. Right. Sir, you are uh, you are viewing this, I think, or are following me. Yeah, yeah, you can see it clearly. Right? No problem. No. So. So the screen is off, sir. Sorry, sir. The screen is visible now. Yeah, I can. We can see your desktop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, you can visualize. You can visualize another, another simulation. That means in this simulation, protein folding is simulated using a molecular dynamics method. Okay, so the protein folding, so biology people and physics people are doing a lot of work uh, in this area, particularly in molecular mechanics and molecular dynamics simulations. The folding of a structure, uh, uh, folding of the structure of a protein can be studied using this molecular dynamics method. So in the simulation, the path of this molecular system, already we, uh, we saw the molecules are moving. The path of a moving molecular system is called a trajectory in the simulation. Trajectory is the path of a moving molecular system in a simulation. And from the trajectory analysis, 
we can uh, we can study lot of uh, properties like interactions in a protein ligand molecular dynamic simulation you can study you can study the interaction between the ligand and protein then hydrogen bonding interactions you can study then thermodynamic properties lot of thermodynamic properties you can study it using this molecular dynamic simulation right and this is one of again uh, we in 2014 with the help of my colleagues i just uh, published uh, uh, a molecular dynamics article in journal of chemical physics again lot of applications are uh, particularly in this molecular dynamics simulation area lot of people are, people are working in this area and uh, i studied the the dynamics of water molecules that pass through pass through the interior of a single walled carbon nanotube uh, that is uh, with the, with the amino acid residue it an amino acid residue uh, so uh, so this is one of our research output related to the molecular dynamics field and now i switch over to another hot area of uh, computational chemistry computer aided drug design computer aided uh, drug design so uh, this is now most of the even uh, in the covid uh, during the time of covid 19 pa pandemic most of the computational chemists are focusing on this area computer aided drug design or using computational chemistry how you can design a drug and what is a drug in short a drug means uh, uh, if if the molecules are classified into macro molecules and small molecules we we call drug a small molecule macro molecule belong uh, this macro proteins or polymers belong to macro molecules and a drug is a small molecule okay so what are the sources of these drugs natural products plant extract synthetic chemicals are all sources for these drugs or small molecules small molecules now drug discovery process is a herculean task for the researcher <laughs> in ancient days in ancient days the chemical synthesis of a drug or a drug discovery or chemical synthesis take long time a trial and error a trial and error experimentation method is followed by the research people lot of chemicals are spending in the laboratories lot of time lot of time is consumed and lot of people are working for the synthesis of a single drug when we when we just consume a paracetamol uh, how many researchers are uh, spending day and night in the laboratory to prepare a paracetamol for the first time that was a herculean task that was a herculean task but nowadays nowadays this computational chemist can support this experimental people or they can complement to this drug discovery process how they can complement reduce the time and money for drug discovery efforts to reduce the wet lab experiments rational drug design through computational modeling lot of suggestions uh, in order to in order to uh, save the time in order to reduce the use of chemicals uh, uh, lot of attempts are uh, happening in this area and in computer aided drug, drug discovery just i just uh, simplify into two step process a two step process first step is the identification of the protein or enzyme that is responsible for the disease disease or health problem whether it is cancer or inflammation or covid or whatever may be the disease whatever may be the disease first you should identify the target protein or target enzyme that is responsible for the disease so if this step is over 75% of the drug discovery process is over i should say i repeat again this uh, this uh, statement if we identify the target protein or enzyme that is responsible for the disease 75% of the drug discovery process is over and in the step 2 finding out a small molecule or drug or ligand i should say in computational drug discovery term ligand or small molecule or drug to block 
or to inhibit the activity of the target enzyme using some docking, molecular docking or other computational chemistry methods. So I just simplify a computer aided drug design process into two step process. First is the identification of the target protein that is responsible for the disease. Second is a compound, find a small molecular compound that is capable of inhibiting the target protein using molecular docking or other computational chemistry methods. Now I am moving to the theory of molecular docking. You are all familiar with the enzyme uh, kinetics or Michael-Mendel kinetics or enzymatic action. What is the role of an enzyme? Enzymes are biological catalysts. In enzymes, a lot of cavity spaces are there or lot of reaction sites are there or lot of active sites are there. To the active site, a natural ligand is binding. A natural ligand is binding and creates the problem and create the problem. That is the theory. That is the theory of a health issue. So I, I must continue. To the, to the pocket or to the active site of the target enzyme, we are, we are allowing to bind the small molecule, small molecule or drug. So most of the drugs available in the market are enzyme inhibitors. Most of the drugs available in the market are enzyme inhibitors. So for a better explanation, I should, uh, I should explain this inflammatory, anti-inflammatory drug, diclofenac sodium. What is the activity of anti-inflammatory drug, di diclofenac sodium? So the first step I already told to you, identification of the target protein or enzyme is the first step. So cyclooxygenase protein or enzyme is the protein responsible for inflammation. How this inflammation happened in the body? A natural ligand called arachidonic acid binds, a natural ligand called arachidonic acid binds to the, to the active site or cavity of cyclooxygenase. I repeat, a natural ligand called arachidonic acid binds to the, to the cavity or active site of cyclooxygenase enzyme. And a compound called prostaglandin is formed. And these prostaglandins are responsible for inflammation in the body. Okay, so this is the mechanism of inflammation. And what is the role of anti-inflammatory drug? Diclofenac sodium or painkiller. We used diclofenac sodium as a painkiller. Or an anti-inflammatory drug, aspirin, ibuprofen. These are all anti-inflammatory drugs. What is the activity of this drug? This drug has binding capacity more than arachidonic acid to the active site of cyclooxygenase. I repeat, these anti-inflammatory drugs has more binding affinity to the active site of cyclooxygenase protein. So before arachidonic, before the binding of arachidonic acid to the active site of Cox enzyme, this drug binds to the pocket of or active site of cyclooxygenase and inflammation stops. So this is the this is the simple theory of anti-inflammatory drug that uh, act against cyclooxygenase enzyme or target protein. And on, I already told in the market almost above 50% of the drugs available in the market are uh, these enzyme inhibitors. So people are searching for, uh, or researchers are doing research to identify the proteins that are responsible for cancer, various cancers, various cancers. This is another example. This methotrexate is a small molecule of drug that inhibits dihydrofolate reductase, uh, which is 
um, uh, which is the reason for a particular type of cancer. So similarly, this HIV protease is responsible for AIDS, the condition of AIDS. So HIV protease is the enzyme or target protein, and this ligand, indinavir or small molecule, bind to HIV protease and block or inhibit the activity of HIV protease. And thus, we can cure using this anti-AIDS drug or uh, HIV protease inhibitors. Using this HIV protease inhibitors, you can cure AIDS. You can cure AIDS. Then, an anti antiviral drug, a small molecule that bind the DNA polymerase. Uh, DNA polymerase. Okay, so these are some examples. Uh, these are some target protein, and these are some small molecules that uh, uh, that block or bind to the target proteins. Then, what is the role of docking, molecular docking, in this drug discovery process? So, the docking means docking means the binding affinity find the binding affinity or binding free energy of a small molecule to the target protein and the process is called docking molecular docking the binding of the computational mimicking or computational process of binding of a small molecule to the pocket of a target protein is called molecular docking molecular docking so uh, a, a visual is uh, already i mean so two components two molecular components involved in computer aided drug design or docking one is one is macromolecular enzymes or target proteins the second is small molecules or ligands or drugs so protein uh, so i am not going into the uh, detail anyway in docking you are finding the binding affinity of a ligand to the active site of a protein and as a result of this docking, you are obtaining the scores, binding scores or docking score, docking score. So if we have 10 compounds, we have a doubt whether these 10 compounds inhibit a particular protein. We just carried out the docking of these 10 compounds. And as a result of this docking, we are getting the binding scores or docking scores of these 10 compounds. The compound with the, with the best binding score can be selected as the best inhibitor of that target protein. I think the picture is clear to you. The picture is clear to you. So prepare the doc. So this is the computational procedure for a protein ligand docking. I will I will show one uh, protein ligand. The terminology ligand is used here because. Okay, so you just see the picture of docking of a small molecule to the active site of a protein. Why we use this terminology of ligand? We know the ligands are groups, chemical groups that form complex with the central metal in when you study the coordination chemistry. The similar terminology is used here. The small molecules or drug form complex with the target protein. So we call this small molecule or drug as ligand. Ligand, right? So docking is a virtual screening process. How this virtual screening? Virtual means computer-based screening. Screening. Suppose we have some thousand compounds. In ancient days, we have thousand compounds. Uh, we have doubt whether these thousand compounds can act as a drug or 
as an inhibitor against the target protein. What uh, then by trial and error, we synthesize these thousand compounds. We check whether these thousand compounds are uh, active against that particular protein. Nowadays, using the computational procedure, you just conduct the docking of thousand compounds to the same protein and you just choose one or two compounds with the best binding scores uh, as uh, as best inhibitors and that one or two compounds can be proceeded to further experimentation further experimentation so these computer aided drug design people or computational chemists help the experimental chemists to reduce the use of chemicals reduce the use of chemicals so is uh, actually we are doing strong research in uh, in the past uh, two years we are involving in this uh, research and uh, very recently before two weeks uh, we just published uh, an article uh, in uh, Taylor and Francis it's one of the uh, one of the, uh, good journal one of the good journal anti covid drug discovery research from uh, ss college Tevera. my phd students and uh, my wife uh, is a uh, collaborator of this work obviously uh, she's a uh, she's an uh, organic chemist uh, and she's a collaborator of this work and uh, uh, in the what is the nature of this research i may i should read this news uh, this already we uh, we sent to uh, so these are some news reports so an anti covid drug discovery research from sacred heart college tevera so the computational chemistry team from Sacred Heart College Tevera come up with a recent study that would help the development of drug of COVID-19. After virtual screening of thousands of bioactive compounds, three dietary flavonoids, amandro flavone, naringin and naringin are identified as inhibitors of novel coronavirus with the help of computer aided drug design. That means docking, docking itself. Then the excellent inhibitory activity of these compounds are further confirmed by molecular dynamic simulation techniques. These compounds are of high interest because of their wide availability, low cost, no side effects, and long history of use. This study is recently published in a reputed international science journal, Journal of Biomolecular Structure and Dynamics. These compounds are expected to be used as effective dietary supplements for home care patients. So you can just visualize a video of molecular dynamics protein ligand simulation from this research. Okay, my protein has a ribbon structure. My ligand, an adenine, a flavonoid, a small molecule, is bind strongly to the active site of this coronavirus protein. This is your main protease of coronavirus protein. And we simulate. So uh, from the trajectory of this simulation, we uh, we calculate the calculated the binding interactions or non-bonding interaction, hydrogen bonding interactions between this ligand and uh, uh, this coronavirus protein, right? OK, so Again, this computational chemistry scope, actually the scope of uh, computational chemistry again, uh, uh, we have some other major areas. Lot of areas are remaining. Anyway, I, I should say uh, a statement. Uh, Newton meets Schrodinger to model chemical reactions. Newton meets, Sir Isaac Newton meets Schrodinger to model chemical reaction. Sir Isaac Newton's method is Computational Molecular Mechanics Method or EMM Method. Schrodinger equation is QM Method. So the new method in computational quantum uh, in computational chemistry is QMMM Method. QMMM Method. QMMM Method. Again in 2013, these three people received their Nobel Prize for modeling for modeling the chemical reactions using QMM methods, modeling the chemical reactions for developing the force fields. Martin Karplus uh, developed the force field. Michael Levitt, he already visited uh, Kerala uh, on a month day uh, in Alapura. I think uh, 
he faced some problems uh, that was reported in newspapers. Michael Levitch is a middle person and last person is Area Varsha. And uh, I uh, luckily had, uh, uh, and uh, I am fortunate to interact with this Varsha, the third person, the Nobel laureate, because my PhD mentor is a friend of uh, this Varshal, Professor Varshal, and uh, using their code, we uh, we have some two research projects. Okay, so in this method, in this method, actually a combination, the reactive part, reactive part is studied using studied using quantum mechanical method or quantum chemistry or the chemical reactive part, and the other surroundings in the chemical system is treated using molecular dynamics method. So I'm not going into the detail uh, of this QMM method. So uh, here in this picture, we are having three regions, a QM region, the core or reactive region, an interface between this reactive region and the classical MM or solvent region. Then uh, this, that means the MM region, uh, is uh, carried out using this molecular mechanics and QM is the quantum mechanical or chemical reactive part. Anyway, this I just show you ADP to in ADP to ATP synthesis. ATP this uh, this catalyst is this enzyme is involving and just show you uh, one QM MM simulation uh, visual QM MM simulation visual. So a phosphate group is trying to bind to the ADP. A single phosphate group is trying to bind. And this is uh, this is the snapshots. This is the trajectory of a QMMM simulation. This is the trajectory or path of a QMMM simulation. This is the trajectory of a QMMM simulation. OK. So again, we have we have uh, some research output in this QMMM simulation. Uh, in 2012, this is uh, one of my PhD work. Uh, we we perform some QMMM simulation using the empirical valence bond methodology, and we model a chemical reaction. Uh, the reactants involved in this reaction is an imidazole ring and an OS group. So a proton is transferred from this imidazole or amino acid residue to this OH group. That part is treated using QM method and the other part including the carbon nanotube and solvents treated using MM. And we publish this research output. The reaction is histidine H plus plus H2O gives histidine plus H3O. This is a simple proton transfer reaction carried out inside a carbon nanotube and we publish this research output uh, as an output of uh, QMMM studies. Right, lot and lot of softwares uh, are now available. Not only the commercial softwares, bigger uh, commercial software providers are uh, uh, in the global market. That means particularly in the medicinal chemistry field, Schrodinger is one of the bigger industrial group that supplying these computational chemistry softwares. Schrodinger, and there is uh, the the price of those softwares are uh, very big, and even using free softwares we can do the smaller type and bigger type of results. And actually, the last published article, uh, particularly the COVID article, we published using exclusively using free softwares, free software, free simulation softwares like Gromax. Uh, NMD, VMD uh, like softwares. OK, and uh, docking performed using Autodoc when I gain a free software. So uh, I may conclude my uh, speech now. Uh, this <coughs> we can we can have a lot of applications. I just summarize the applications of uh, this computational chemistry. We can um, we can uh, we can calculate the right geometry of a molecule. We can study the mechanism of a reaction. We can derive the potential energy surface of a reaction. We can design a chemical reaction. Nowadays, uh, this uh, that means the prediction of products. 
or design of organic reaction is possible. Uh, in, uh, uh, in a article published in Nature, from the databases, chemical databases, some codes are developed by this uh, computational chemist group to predict the product of a, an organic reaction. So we can predict the product of a reaction using this computational chemistry calculation. We can design or we can prepare a scheme of the reaction. If the scheme is optimum, then we can do for the when then we can do the synthesis actual synthesis for experiment. So we can design a reaction. Uh, we can calculate the geometry of a molecule. Uh, we can derive the potential energy path of the reaction. We can design a drug. We can design a drug. Then we can model the actual chemical reactions and lot of other biological experiments are possible. Lot of other biological experiments are also are possible. So lot of scope in this area, particularly in this online mode, uh, we can access uh, to our lab computers and can do or run these calculations and do the research. OK, and uh, thank you uh, for my PhD mentor, uh, my friend uh, and faculty member, Dr. Anu Payupan, my senior colleague in now uh, he's in Washington University. My uh, uh, my friend and senior professor of uh, MG University, and again my wife, uh, a collaborator in my research work, and uh, we are now offering training workshops in computational chemistry in one of the three areas, uh, practical exercises, and these three workshops and two-day workshops we plan for two-day workshops, particularly for teachers university or college teachers and professionals two day workshops in any one of this area one is practical exercises in computational quantum chemistry and uh, uh, the participants the maximum participants 10 to 50 15 or maximum up to 20 desktops or laptops and free softwares are used for that purpose and uh, the second one is molecular docking and drug design again the minimum number of partip participants, Windows OS or software are using. And third one is a more serious uh, affair, Gramax or NAMD simulation training. But uh, Linux OS uh, is required, 10 to 15 participants. Uh, uh, OK, so this is <laughs> maybe one of our advertisements. Uh, thank you for uh, a patient listening. I think uh, some 10 minutes are remaining for discussion. 10 or 15 minutes. OK, thank you, Professor Rebin. It is a that is an excellent talk on the novel topics of the computational chemistry. Now the session is open for discussion and you can clear your doubts. Please unmute yourself and ask questions. Or in the chat box, I think if the chat box is visible, yeah, you, you can, can type yeah. the questions. Yes, yes. Okay, I will start with uh, some discussions. Sorry. Yeah, sir, it was a wonderful journey. It's a virtual journey <laughs> among the chemistry. Yeah. Chemistry live, and uh, I'm happy that students might have at least understood that uh, a computational f uh, work is as important as uh, doing a lab work in the current uh, era in the nowadays, uh, especially in the field of bio drug designing. And uh, that's what also is our motive to introduce students to how the the latest. Uh, discovery in drug discovery has evolved from, from the hundreds and thousands of scientists working in wet lab and clinical research to to the big workstations the, the current modern era that of course we have I have we have a lot of things to discuss but I am not going to everything this one question I'm more curious to learn is that about your I mean not about the drug discovery but first one is that the transition state calculations can you maybe it's more technical but can you give me some more information about the transition state calculation? Whether you have this uh, any any tool for optimization of the transition state structure, or or is there a CD? Actually, or a yes. Yeah, actually, actually, a potential energy scan. Uh, ah. Potential energy scan. Uh, 
uh, from uh, by uh, by changing the bond length of uh, two bonds involved in the one bond breaking and making obviously involved yeah. in a particular organic reaction and that particular path in that particular path uh, we just create a structure in ghost view and uh, we make a potential energy scan when we change the bond length from uh, from one distance to another that means yeah. the breaking and formation of a bond the process uh, is scanned a potential energy scan calibration is subjected in uh, Gaussian and uh, we are getting the transition state first after getting the transition state uh, uh, then uh, we move to both sides that means in the forward direction and backward direction to get the uh, reactant state and the product state geometries uh, but in between uh, obviously there should be a scheme or the uh, the organic chemist should propose a scheme this may be the possible structure from this to this then only we can try for that uh, the transition state structure actually okay i think uh, you are because uh, first we just optimize the transition state obviously obviously the transition state a guest transition state that is the correct okay. guest transition state in between two states okay, but okay. Uh, actually after after this experiment uh, my wife and uh, his mentor uh, her mentor uh, draw a reaction scheme for us I see. That means including the structure, including the chemical structure. And okay. we just try for that chemical structure in between because the okay. initial structure and the final structure is known to us because they did the characterization of that particular compound using NMR and GCMS. So the initial structure and the final structure is known. But the in between structure, uh, they give okay. a scheme. They give a scheme for us. And using that scheme or guest geometry, we start the calculation for uh, transition state optimization okay, and okay. then uh, and follow, following a potential energy scan we just uh, derive the path of that reaction okay. but uh, i'm not actually uh, truly uh, spe um, speaking i'm not an expert of deriving the transition states okay, uh, okay. actually uh, anyway we just uh, we are lucky to have the transition state of those two reactions Okay, and okay. we publish those two reactions a yeah, lot good. of a uh, lot of works are in the hands of my wife because they <laughs> synthesize many compounds <laughs> but uh, the transition state calculation of all those reactions are not possible now yeah <laughs> not only that we are now uh, transferring our research to this uh, computer aided drug design exclusively uh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> for yeah. the last two years we are not touching with any reaction mechanism studies I see. okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, yeah, but one other thing I uh, I'm very impressed that you have got a lot of graphics interfaces, uh, which yeah. is very good for the especially to uh, make students more understand. Which I'm a little bit of reluctant. I mean, it was very uh, it was very interesting to see that you can even work on Gaussian with us, typically on with uh -huh. on a graphic interface. It is very very I mean, yeah. it's very, it's very easy for the students to understand. Other than learning all these Linux commands and yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, um, of course uh, there are many. There will be a lot of things to discuss, but uh, we have a little bit of time constraint. Let me ask uh, any other students. Yeah. Questions from the delegates. Yeah, students and our participants maybe. Okay. This is very new to all the students, I think, for PG one also. Yeah. Uh, let me ask one thing. Uh, you mentioned about the anti COVID research, yeah, drug designing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you done? Uh, have you got any experimental evidence for that experimental support? No, no actually, uh, no, no, no. Actually, uh, this is just uh, prediction, and uh, lot of theory uh, results are the uh, uh, particularly these flavonoid compounds, and these compounds are available and cheap, uh, cheaply available. And later, if we have some good collaborations with these experimental people, we can uh, go for the this inhibitory activity test. Uh, this test, uh, the inhibitory concentration test, IC50 like uh, test, or uh, uh, that type of experiments are possible in uh, Hyderabad uh, and in I think in the Indian Institute of Science also. And even in some of our hospitals and medical colleges, uh, that type of protein. 
inhibitory activity, protein uh, inhibitory activity tests are available. So these compounds are available. That means these flavonoid compounds are available. So obviously with the help of experimental people, we can extend these studies to the experimental results. No doubt, no doubt. Okay, that's quite interesting. If there is no other questions, uh, let me invite uh, Ms. Demia M. Nair to mention the vote of thanks. Thank you to all. Today is an opportunity to hear an excellent talk on practical applications of computational chemistry. The topic was very useful for all the participants. Practical sessions were very interesting, sir. Our postgraduate and undergraduate students got an awareness on computer-aided drug delivery and molecular docking. It was very interesting. On behalf of the postgraduate department of chemistry, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to you, sir. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the participants and the organizing team. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. With that, we conclude so, this afternoon uh, session. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, may I leave, sir? Then later we will interact. Great, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.